Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic naturopathic doctor and founder of Amour de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice, and this is my awesome co-host, Donovan. Today, I have a very special guest, Rihanna Milne. She is a certified global life and love trauma recovery coach, a certified clinical trauma and addictions professional, a certified mindfulness coach, a number one best-selling author, and the host of her podcast, Lessons in Life and Love. She is also an educational speaker, a licensed mental health counselor for over 21 years, living in Palm Beach County in Florida. So many accolades. So lovely to have you here, Rihanna. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Yes, yes. Excellent. Yeah. So you have a lot of background and experience in trauma and love and relationships. So what was your journey that led you to this pathway? Well, I started first really with mindset work. Mm. And let's go back to my teens real quick. My very best friend, I lost him in a car crash at age 16. Mm. And I started to question how much time do I have left? So the only way I could find some meaning and goals about life was reading the masters. Mm -hmm. So Tony Robbins and Wayne Dyer, Marion Williamson. So I created and got really into spirituality and the mindset for success in my late teens and early 20s. At 26, I opened up a model and talent school and agency, represented talent from five to 80. My 80 year old was one of the busiest books talents. <laughs> and, you know, these were people from Erie PA that had a dream. And most people would laugh at them. You're going to modeling school. That's a joke. Mm -hmm. And my people worked a lot. I mean, top campaigns, billboards, magazines, flew to LA, New York, and I taught mindset to get beyond the negative fear-based thinking mm -hmm. to really focus in on their goals or wants, needs, and desires. So that's when the mindset work started. And I loved being the counselor, the unofficial counselor. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to school for counseling. So I went back and got a triple master's and applied clinical and counseling psychology at age 37. Uh, finished in three years and opened up my own practice in Southern New Jersey called Therapy by the Sea. So I ended up while I was building my practice, taking on a lot of other jobs. So I was a trauma counselor in the schools up in Jersey. It's called a SAC counselor, student assistance mm -hmm. counselor. And I did every grade level, kindergarten all the way through college at Rowan University. I was working with kids of traumatic backgrounds. Then I was in a mental health unit as a, at a hospital. Then I was working in a drug and alcohol rehab center because I'm LCADC too. So for drugs and alcohol addictions with both teens and women from the prison system. So no matter what they were, where they were coming from, whether it was my private practice or the prison system, trauma was all the same. And the outcomes of the trauma that they were experiencing as an adult, the top 10 traumas kept showing up as far as what they were having in their childhood. But what really got me to specialize in this is I experienced two love traumas myself, one mm -hmm. at age 24, mm -hmm. and that's the father of my children that I ended up divorcing very early on because it was an abusive and toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. And then later in life, when I actually married someone um, from a school, a principal in a school, we were introduced by a school superintendent. Mm -hmm. And he did things he was not supposed to do in school and was immediately fired. It was a big community scandal. And I'm like, what is wrong with the people I am choosing? Why don't they have accountability? Why aren't they not evolved more consciously aware? Because again, I've been studying this kind of work for many years at this point. So then I started doing the research because my psychotherapy friends could not help me. At this point, we never heard of childhood trauma. The terms mm -hmm. did not exist. We did not hear about it in our therapy training. And that's why a lot of counselors don't go into it. Mm -hmm. So I did the research for my own healing mm -hmm. and I was fascinated. And that's uh, my number one best-selling book, Love Beyond Your Dreams, is about some of that research early on. It's like, oh my God, this is so fascinating. I got to put it into a book where after 400 pages, I'm like, okay, I still have more. <laughs> you know? And then I started writing a training curriculum. 
And that's my notebook that my clients get that's 150 pages. So I had to write several notebooks, one for singles, one for couples, um, because I have both clients. I also have straight and LGBTQ clients from ages 16. My oldest client came in at 76 um, because childhood trauma has no prejudice. So mm -hmm. that's what I did back in 2012. I created the childhood trauma checklist. That's mm -hmm. an easy diagnostic tool for people to look at and say, yes or no, I had these traumas and then how they related to their life situation as an adult. And it was very different from the ACE test when I saw that years later. So that I thought that was interesting. You've got all kinds of uh, different stuff in your background and really it has evolved piecemeal. Like you, you've kind of pulled in these different parts and grown and, and really tied them together nicely. Uh, I think there are a lot of different directions we could take. I think the first I would like to touch on is maybe some more of this childhood trauma hood stuff. And then we can move into later how that sort of affects relationships. But uh, wherever you think is a good starting point, I'd love to unpack a little bit more of some of these, these trauma uh, pieces that you've talked about. Yes. So um, when I started doing this work, I was doing psychotherapy still in private practice. And then I started the coaching model. And for mm -hmm. the listeners, a lot of people don't understand the difference between counseling and coaching. Mm -hmm. So counseling, they're kind of really examining, saying a lot. How do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. And coaching is very educational. I already know they have anxiety, depression, high trauma. So now I have to teach them the skills that they never got on how to heal the trauma and move forward with a, um, to create the life they really desire, right? And the skills to attract the love that they deserve, who is emotionally healthy, evolved, and consciously aware. Mm -hmm. So it's highly educational, motivational, um, and very interactive with my clients. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching globally now. So the top 10 traumas, there are more than 10. But these are the ones that I created the checklist for because they were seen over and over and over again. And the mm -hmm. research showed that at the time, nine out of 10 people admitted to having at least one to three traumas on the top 10 list. However, this year, I was at a couple of conferences, they're like 100% of people have childhood trauma. So I'm like, oh, that's a new fact. Okay. Um, also, some new facts is it definitely does go through three generations, at least, which I knew. But they're also talking about how it greatly impacts the DNA for mm -hmm. survivors of the Holocaust, their DNA changed to their children and their grandchildren mm -hmm. because they went through such stress and high anxiety that mm -hmm. their DNA actually changed and it goes through the generation. So that's pretty fascinating. So it's still a really new area of study mm -hmm. and there's still always much to learn. Okay, so the top 10 traumas, and if the listeners want to write this down, um, and if you can't, we're going to give you uh, an ebook at the end where you can find these uh, later. So as I go through the top 10 list, I just want people to be aware that this is not about blame or shame. We don't want to blame your parents at this point, because again, if you recognize you had traumas, so did your parents. Mm -hmm. So we dissect the family systems around that. And also, um, it's not to feel guilty or ashamed yourself. You are an innocent child. You are a product of your environment. And the good news, the happy news, the happy talk news is that this can be healed. So as I go through this, I don't want you to feel, oh, my God, like I have this. This is horrible. Just know you can't change what you don't understand or acknowledge, right? So that's where I was when I had that second love trauma. I'm like, what is going on? And I didn't understand it. And that was frustrating more than anything. And then when I got the research, I could then help and heal myself. So knowledge is power. So the first top 10 are, uh, as, as a child, did you have a parent or caretaker? The first one is having any addiction. So I know the ACE test is drugs or alcohol. Well, mm -hmm. as an addiction specialist, there's 12 addictions that could show up. Mm -hmm. So it's drugs, alcohol, sex, meaning you knew your parent was a cheater. Mm -hmm. And I've had people say they used to go with their father to see the girlfriend and have to wait in the car to wow. talk about trauma that they knew their parent was a cheater and had a lie to the mom. Yeah. Okay. Um, sex uh, or porn use, porn addiction, gambling, hoarding, mm -hmm. spending, eating, gaming, mm -hmm. TV watching, workaholism, and recently added to the list is any social media or computer use addiction. 
Okay, so that's, yeah, that's the first one where the child is just then put on machines too. here, play with that, leave mom alone, you know, yeah. so we really have to do more interaction and, you know, affection with our children. Okay, yeah. the second one is verbal messages. Mm-hmm. And this comes out huge in adult anxiety and, and low self worth. Mm-hmm. So those could be watching mom and dad yell and scream being yelled at yourself. Uh, verbal put downs being told, you know, you're not good enough. You look fat in that. No, I'm not paying for college. Why would I waste my money? Just any kind of verbal slurs or put downs, not hearing compliments or not hearing the words. I love you, Mm -hmm. which was huge in the baby boomer generation. We did not grow up with a lot of affection or the words. I love you. That was very rare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, The next one is emotional abuse or neglect. Mm -hmm. Next one is any physical abuse, rape, or molestation. And again, any of these could have happened inside or outside of the home. So you could have had an ideal home life, but been bullied every day on your way to school. Okay, so they could happen anywhere as as a child or teen. Okay, the next one is if you were part of adoption, foster care, or needed to live in another person's home, grandma, Mm -hmm. aunts, because your parents couldn't take care of you. Mm -hmm. Next one is abandonment. Mm -hmm. And there's two types that I name fault to no fault abandonment and the original ACE test. And I don't even know if it's on there because I don't use the ACE test. They didn't put abandonment on there at all, Mm -hmm. which to me is huge when it comes to love issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the two types that I name is fault and no fault. So a fault abandonment would be if a parent was never involved in your life, they were involved while the couple was together or married, then there was a breakup and they barely saw the child Mm -hmm. or even emotional abandonment where they're there presently, but not actively involved in your life, barely Mm -hmm. talking to you. Don't go to your school events, just home. No, barely home, but Mm -hmm. you know, they're there. Okay. So that's fault. No fault would be if a parent happened to die early, if your parent Mm -hmm. had to deploy and go overseas you know, Mm -hmm. to help the country or like my situation, my dad traveled a lot. And I remember asking as a kid, where's dad? When's daddy coming home? My mom said, well, I don't know where he is. I'm like, well, is he okay? (laughs) And we find out years later, he was FBI and CIA. So he couldn't tell the family or my mom where he was. Mm -hmm. So at, you know, 50, I find out, oh, okay, I get it. Now I get what my dad is gone, but it was no fault because that's how he supported the family. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is work related. Okay. So the next one is one that most people identify with trauma number seven, which is personal trauma. So this is, if you were ever bullied at school, you might've been born with a medical condition. You might've been an overweight chubby child and teased or skinny and gawky and called a nerd. You might've been the only LGBTQ student and the, the rest of the kids made fun of you while you were coming out, you weren't accepted. Um, there's so many ways you could have been the only African-American student in an all Caucasian school. So there's so many ways you could have felt different or that you didn't fit in. So Mm -hmm. many people can identify with trauma seven. Trauma eight is sibling trauma. So this could be your sibling was born with a medical issue, commanding more of mom's and dad's time and making you feel like kind of left off to the side. It could have been your sibling bullied you or more common, you see your sibling as the golden child, the favored one. So the star Mm -hmm. athlete, someone who's smarter than you or more handsome, more beautiful, they just got more accolades from mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Trauma nine has two. And I had to bring down trauma 11 that was not there. It was trauma 11 for a long time, but it's community trauma. And this one is one that everyone has experienced in the past year, which is a COVID pandemic. Yeah. So it affects communities at large. So this could also be mother nature events, floods, fires, hurricane, tornadoes. It could also be our mass shootings, school shootings, wherever, you know, communities are impacted. And then family trauma is the other half of that. Mm -hmm. So family trauma because of COVID parents are losing jobs. Kids are afraid their parents are going to get sick if they go off to work. Um, you know, before COVID that could also be 
a military family moving every two to four years. So the kid is the new kid in school all the time. Mm -hmm. It could be the family living in a dangerous neighborhood where you heard a lot of lack messages. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be a parent is incarcerated. Uh, So there's a lot of things around family that that could be. And number 10 is mental health illness in mom or dad. The two most difficult uh, to navigate for a child is bipolar and borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. Borderline quick and easy is described at uh, very erratic moods, Mm -hmm. Uh, quick temper when nobody else would get mad at something. And usually when they're good, they're great. But when they're bad, they are horrid and you never know what you're going to get. This one leaves a kid in a very anxious state. Mm -hmm. Bipolar is manic depressive. So manic phase, some people say, is that the high and happy one? Well, it could be, but Mm -hmm. it also could be wrapped around a spending addiction, food binge, gambling addiction, something Mm -hmm. like that. And depression can show up as anger, checking out emotionally or extreme fatigue. Mm -hmm. So those are the top 10 that I identify in my clients. Then I look at the severity level of one to 10, how severe was it? And then I analyze how that's showing up. Wow. That's a pretty, a pretty, very comprehensive list. And I was counting along of like what applies to me. I was, right. I was like, I think I got like four or five of them, honestly, because yeah. I you know, as a daughter of immigrants and in that, you know, and you wouldn't think that because, you know, my parents weren't like beating me or I had a roof, I had food, right. um, they weren't neglectful. But, you know, they didn't say, I love you. They didn't um, really weren't very expressive in that sense. And, you know, normally I wouldn't see that as like trauma, but I could see, well, I know because I've also like you've done so much personal development. I struggled in relationships for so long. I had to like figure that out on my own and learn to develop healthier relationships and heal myself and learn to love myself. Um, but yeah, the, my brother being the golden child, because he's the only boy, <laughs> like that was yeah. one of them. They were and that's what you're talking about yeah. is very cultural too. Mm-hmm. You know, the stereotypic yeah. norm where the male yeah. is favored mm-hmm. or, um, there was not a lot of expression of loves and hugs and kisses or the words, I love you. Yeah. And that was considered normal. Mm-hmm. Right. But then it does impact our soul and psyche as children, when we don't get those kinds of messages. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I a hundred percent resonate with that. So, you know, seeing like, I'm pretty sure everyone could at least find one. <laughs> I had like four or five in that. And I, again, I, you know, to most people, it wouldn't, they wouldn't classify me as like traumatized or abused. to that degree My I have loving parents, but they, their expression of that. And it's because they didn't learn themselves. They were taught to work hard. They weren't taught to deal with their feelings. And so I'm curious, you know, how does this type of trauma impact love and relationships and their sense of themselves and their careers even maybe? Okay. So what I want to explain before I go into that is the type of traumas, little T trauma and big T trauma. (laughs) So big T trauma is what most people say you had trauma or not like a car accident and you broke your leg or just something major, you know, Mm -hmm. like your parent died when you were young. That is big T trauma. Mm -hmm. Okay. But these little T traumas, they show scientifically, it's just as impactful on the brain and the body cells where trauma is stored Mm -hmm. uh, because you are enduring these things over time. Mm -hmm. So the child learns to cope in many different ways, which is okay for survival as for the child. But then as you become an adult, they can become dysfunctional in your love relationship. So let's explain how that looks. So let's say there's a little boy beaten a lot from his alcoholic father. So he'd come home from school and he goes, oh my God, I have an F on the test. I'll change it to an A. Maybe he'll be too drunk to see it. Mm -hmm. Guy signed it and he goes, great, that works. So he learns lying works. Lying's a coping mechanism. So this is someone that'll lie about anything. And you'll hear people say, well, why do you have to lie about that? Like, it's no big deal. But it Mm -hmm. became so normalized. Mm -hmm. Or if he says, if he tries to talk back to the father, he might've gotten whacked or screamed at. So this would be a situation where a man learned to shut down. I better not say anything. It's going to be worse. And that's how they become passive aggressive. 
Mm-hmm. So with an adult woman, you know, if there's an issue, the body, the emotional triggers, like, I'm going to freeze, I'm not going to say anything, it could get worse, because that's what they learn. That's what's normalized. And the woman said, well, just tell me what you feel. And he just can't. He's like, so blocked up and stuck um, with his fear and his mm-hmm. negative mindset, right? So we have to process those things. So that's just one example, lying, um, Jealousy and control come from trauma number seven, being bullied or feeling not good, good enough under personal trauma. And yeah. two, those verbal messages, mm-hmm. you know, you'll amount to no good. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. These things, you just don't fit in. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever messages you heard when you were bullied, you know, so again, those resonate and stay with people over long times. So even though your partner could be showing you in many ways, yes, I love you. You know, you still might be jealous or try to control the relationship because you're afraid you might lose your partner. Yeah. But that's how that shows up. Um, Impulsivity is one of the most dangerous ways it shows up. Hmm. Fast marriages, um, quick sexual involvement. Mm -hmm. And this is usually happening to those that have abandonment issues, especially from the opposite sex. So if a young Mm -hmm. girl didn't have her father around much, or he was there and very verbally abusive and nasty. Mm -hmm. She would crave love from the adult man. And Mm -hmm. she might consciously say, this guy's no good for me, but the Mm -hmm. feeling of love and connection is stronger than what she consciously wants to do. Mm -hmm. So she'll be with that person if he gives her a lot of love and attention. And unfortunately, the sociopath, the psychopath, the narcissist gives people a lot of love and attention early on. Mm -hmm. They are people that use another for pleasure, profit, or lifestyle advancement. Mm -hmm. So um, also what can happen with abandonment issues is what we call relationship repetition syndrome, RRS. So it could be a toxic person over and over and over again. You can't figure out why do I keep attracting this kind of person? Mm -hmm. Or you're stuck in the cycle of breaking up and getting back together. And the research shows that happens an average of seven times before the healthier person says, that's it. I can't do it anymore. Mm. So you're, you know, consciously you got to break up, but then that unconscious pull for needing love and affection is stronger. Um, Mm. Some other things that show up with abandonment is love addiction, codependency, Mm. um, addiction can stem from, you know, not feeling good enough or other issues within the household just to escape or self-medicate from that horrible feeling of ongoing anxiety. Mm -hmm. Um, Perfectionism, that's a big one. And Mm -hmm. a need to control. And Mm -hmm. that need to control comes from children that had a very chaotic household. They felt like they had no control as kids. They couldn't say, do anything. Mm -hmm. So as adults, they like things just so perfect. Now that can work out okay at work. But in love relationships, if you're nitpicking and trying to control your partner, you know, it really erodes the love. Yeah. Yeah. So those are just a few of the dynamics that can show up in business. You had asked me that, Mm -hmm. Alice. Um, Okay. So it can show up in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So it could show up with someone being a workaholic because the only way to prove or get love from a difficult parent was to work really hard and to prove your worth, right? You know, to have great grades and accolades in business. So the workaholism thing is huge for people that didn't get many compliments. We're always trying to please your mom and dad. Mm -hmm. The workaholism is one way it shows up or the opposite. There's people that don't have enough confidence. They'll start something and then they sabotage it or they quit or it's like, I can't do this. And they, they don't have staying power. Mm. Or if they grow up with lack messages from trauma nine in their family, they're going to say, oh, I want to be a coach, but I can't invest in myself. I don't want to spend $2,000 to, you know, increase my knowledge. So I guess this just isn't going to work for me. Mm -hmm. Or they do it for six months. It's like, this isn't working. And they just quit and go back to the mundane job. Or they stay stuck in that job they hate because they're so afraid to change it. Mm So I have a lot of people that come to me who hate their job and we do, I do job coaching as well. 
-hmm. because, you know, we are, you know, partially what we do is create that life they desire. So what is it you would love to do? And then we start in actions, the goals to make that happen. Um, so psychologically, that fear based of I'm afraid to move on, or they could be a boss that even bullies others, mm-hmm. you know, or the, the real competitive employee, they want to beat out the other people on the sales team and that the arrogance or narcissism can show up if they mm-hmm. are the winner or, you know, the leading salesperson. So it can sh- it wreak a lot of havoc in corporate life, you know, if this is not settled. So, um, and then in life, it shows up with, um, I always hear about mental fog. I feel like I'm in a fog, even my eyes are foggy. You know, Mm -hmm. that's part of it. Ongoing anxiety, bouts of depression, uh, problems with concentration for sure. With my students, um, you know, a lot of them were misdiagnosed ADHD. And I said, this is not an ADHD child. Her mom is overseas in Afghanistan. She's scared to death she's not coming home. So this kid is totally checked out at school, you know, looking out the window and always just all she can think about is my mom okay. Mm-hmm. And they say, oh, she's ADHD. I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> so I was doing things like meditation with my students and Miss Rihanna's relaxation room before meditation in school was even known to do. Mm-hmm. Music therapy helps uh, calm the mind and the body. So we were doing a lot of that with my students. Um, positive behavioral charts where when they did perform, they would get some kind of reward, which originally is extrinsic reward like oh wow yes I want that toy Mm -hmm. and then internally they they adopted more because it's like wow I'm doing better in school and that feels good and my teacher likes me more because I'm not acting up in the classroom and now I have more friends they don't hate me Mm -hmm. so it starts externally and then it becomes internal so Mm -hmm. it was really great to see the children change who were presenting with trauma when we did these holistic remedies to help them excel. So it works for all ages. I love it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So it sounds like, um, you know, the pictures starting to form in my mind, right. Where you have one of many traumas or many of many traumas and you learn these sort of tactics or ways of coping and they don't carry along with you. Right. And then you have to unlearn them or learn different ways to cope, to build, um, you know, sort of healthy relationships or, be successful in other ways. I would be curious to just touch on uh, kind of the part, like let's say that I hypothetically have some sort of problem going on, right? And and, and I've noticed maybe it's like these, these relationships, right? I keep getting into these same relationships and they're not really working out and something's a little bit off. Where do you think is kind of one of the first places that people can can start looking? How do, how do people start on this journey? I'm sure it's a long Very way, first but, thing we yeah. do. I do a one hour deep dive. It's called the life and love transformation discovery session. I have it down to a science in one hour with six assessments. I diagnose what their traumas are, where they've come from in childhood and how they're showing up as an adult. And people have said, oh my God, I learned more in this session than seven years of therapy. Again, Mm -hmm. because I'm very educational. So everyone that sits in front of me is a different story, right, Donovan? It depends what trauma show up, what severity levels show up. And then I know how to treat them if they become my client. But -hmm. again, this 150 page workbook is our team strategy. So how they answer the questions is how I know how to help them best. Mm -hmm. So it's very interactive. It's not like one size fits all. But, you know, usually if you're struggling in relationships, again, you have personal trauma, usually verbal messaging, um, not feeling good enough, worthy enough. You could have been impulsive, like, yeah, she's pretty. I want her. She's hot, you know, versus taking your time because maybe your mom was critical or not involved in your life. This was maybe a working mom that was barely around. So you crave that intimacy. So I really have to diagnose what's going on from day one before I can say what's going on. Does that make sense? And then we also have to look at the whole biology of trauma, Mm -hmm. right? So I do a lot of holistic work between meditation, vitamin therapy, mindset work, because definitely long-term trauma, which is part of what the Kaiser Permanente study did out of San Diego with the CDC, they were showing all these 
you know, early diseases, heart disease, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, so many things, lupus, MS, related to this long-term trauma stress that people cannot get out of their brain and their body. So it is really important that I look at it from mind, body, and spirit, like this holistic package. And then I do a little psychotherapy, coaching, mindset work, and trauma recovery. So mm-hmm. it's this blend of all these different modalities. Um, so yeah, I mean, they have shorter lifespan, heart disease. So we have to make sure we're healing the brain and the body. And that's where I start first to make them feel good physically, Mm -hmm. because if they're exhausted, which many people show up, it's like, I'm so tired, you know, I'm falling asleep at work. I'm so stressed out. I am high anxiety. I'm I'm crying. I'm lonely, you know, so we have to deal with the brain and the body first Mm -hmm. and they're feeling great. And under my method, it happens within 10 days. Now they're alert enough to learn the new stuff and they're really excited about learning the new techniques. So that's how we move forward. And then the second half of the program is the dating or relationship communication. So Mm -hmm. when I have a couple come in, for example, that program is called Relationship Rescue. And very often they're in stuck in a cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, they make up and they get together because they're tied to each other in a codependent way, usually. Mm-hmm. And then about 10 days later to two weeks, the, the fighting starts again, the emotional triggers, and it tends to be the same type of arguments over and over. So they're triggering each other and they don't know what's going on. You know, it's the same type of patterns. So we have to teach them a new way to communicate, break the old patterns that are not working, teach them what each other's traumas are so they have more empathy and not take things so personally Mm-hmm. And then, you know, communicate around that, which is a whole new communication style. So let's say a husband goes off to work and his boss is there. I can't believe you lost that account. You know, you're mm-hmm. screwing up. If you do this one more time, you're out. And the boy grew up with a message his father saying, you're no good. You'll never amount to anything. So mm-hmm. now he's fired up and pissed off and road raging home. And then he comes home and he's angry with the wife. The wife said, now what do I do? Why is he mad at me now? Right. So Mm -hmm. one thing triggers another. And then her self-esteem was she was never good enough. She she would be yelled at a lot. So he's short or snappy with her or passive aggressive. He shut down and goes, just call me when dinner's ready. And, you know, no appreciation for the woman because he's upset and he doesn't know how to process it. So all this has to be learned and relearned as far as how to handle any kind of emotional triggers that come up. Mm, yeah, I could, I could see that, especially given that probably the majority of the population has some sort of trauma to some degree. If, if you're counting it from the top 10 that you suggested, it's like both parties are coming in with their own trauma and then they're reacting based on those childhood wounds of like not feeling good enough and that can escalate and make a relationship difficult so my question is like how do you how do you overcome that and get to a healthy state in the relationship well as a certified clinical trauma professional all the trauma work i have done has said it takes about six months Mm -hmm. of total practice retraining the body to think and behave in a different way. Mm-hmm. And that's why, you know, the mindset and the biology work is super important. I describe it like a rainbow and I was there. You don't know what's going on. So it's horrible to not know what you don't know. Yeah. And then you start getting the education and you're learning the skills and you keep practicing them. And it's like, okay, I'm feeling better. I'm getting this. And then when you're triggered, you do the mind work, you know, that conscious processing to why were you were emotionally upset and then use one of the skills that you learned to heal that, right? Mm-hmm. And then as you practice that and you get over the rainbow and when you know, it becomes like second nature yeah. and you use these skills the rest of your life. And what's really cool to see is my clients and teach your parents this, like me, when I said, mom, you know, why don't you tell the kids that you love them? And she's there. Well, I never heard those words. You know, we grew up in the Great Depression. This is where the baby boomers rarely heard the words. I love you. It was all about work and survival. So her love language with her kids is if you work and do a good job, I'll love you. 
because that's what she learned. That's her normal. Right. So I said, but your kids really need to hear this, mom. You know, we know you love us, but we need to hear the words. And from that day, she started saying it. So we start educating our parents, our brothers and sisters and our children. Mm -hmm. When I was learning mindset, you know, my girls had a very difficult father, but they ended up being very successful daughters. They were out of the house working at 19. My daughter sings on three multi-platinum CDs, ended up putting water wells in Africa at age 20, has 21 water wells now and is in Inc. and Forbes magazine. So when they get the mindset early and this like, I can do what I dream to do, I can create the life I desire. Then, you know, they, they go through life more confidently, no matter what the other messages were as they were growing up. So, like I said, I love teaching this to my students, my high school students, the middle school kids, and they get it. They, they love it because it, they feel differently. So it works for all ages. Yeah, I think that's a really um, nice message to make sure it hits home, which is just that, you know, there are these things that most people have experienced, if not everyone and there are ways through them and to, to kind of get the skills that you need. And it takes work and it takes effort. And a lot of times it probably takes help, you know, from someone who's very well versed in what's going on, but uh, you, you know, it can be done. So I, I just want to drive that message home an extra time. Oh yeah. I mean, the healing is amazing. I've helped thousands of people through the years. So all you have to do is show up and work with me. That's pretty simple. Um, and be patient with the process. People want change like this. Yeah. It is not a fast change because there's so much to unlearn and learn new processes mm-hmm. from going from unconscious to consciously aware in both life and how you handle things and love relationships. Mm-hmm. So, you know, most people, me included, was taught fall in love because you have chemistry. You know, if your your heart is beating and wow, you think they're cute. Yeah, that's my boyfriend, right? We yeah. had that sleeping beauty nursery rhyme. Oh, mm-hmm. it's a handsome prince. We'll go off and be happily ever after. You know, but it wasn't, it doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and falling in love by chemistry is one of the most dangerous ways to fall in love because yeah. the mind, the brain wants to keep you in homeostasis. It wants to keep you knowing what you know. So it keeps going back. Your chemistry is part of the dynamics with, from your mom and dad with each other and with you. Mm-hmm. So that's chemistry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you've got to be definitely more educated and consciously aware. And that's what my clients learn. And my singles, you know, it's very important that they heal their past first because a lot of singles go out and help hope someone will fix them. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't have money. I hope I can find someone that will support me or, you know, um, I want someone just to love me. And the first guy that shows them attention, they're sexual with them too early, then they drop her and then she feels rejected again. So <laughs> there's just so much to learn. And the first thing is self-love. You know, you really got to love who you are. And we, we go through this checklist to make sure they are emotionally healthy and happy singles. Then they go out to date. Yeah. They then become the choosers. They know what they want. They're feeling empowered. They love their life. If they have someone great, if they don't, they're still great. You know, so it's not from a point of desperation or neediness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super important. So important. So important. I 100% resonate with that. And Rihanna, it's been such a pleasure having you on our show. So enlightening. Before we wrap up, is there anything you'd like to plug for our audience? (laughs) Yeah, I just want to remind everyone, like now is the time. If COVID taught us anything, Mm -hmm. life is short and you can create that life you desire and have the love you deserve. So go for it. Don't wait. I do have a, you know, uh, life and love transformation discovery session. It's only $47 if you mention the podcast and it's normally $497. So you can just get that and free ebook and also free love test and my book chapters of live and love beyond your dreams all at my website, rihannamilm.com. And my podcast has about 108 shows. And I think I have 250 audios and videos on my YouTube channel, which is Rihanna Milm. So there's lots of educational materials for you out there. Wow. Great, great resources. We'll put links down below in the description. Thank you again so much for for joining us today.
Thank you for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please take a second to subscribe as it really helps out a lot. If you're looking for more content, there's all sorts of information over at howtohappy.com. And if you want something a little bit more condensed and concise, I've also written the book Mindscaping, which is essentially a framework for optimizing happiness. So we'll have the link there as well. And that's all I've got. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.